In the historic port town of Plymouth, tucked away in a quiet residential area, is 70-year-old Arthur Watson's two-bedroom flat. I remember thinking, I won't be here for more than five years. Well, my life didn't quite go to plan. Over the next three decades, he's filled every room with clutter. The bedroom, the lounge, the conservatory, and the kitchen. May I point out one feature that you probably think is disgusting? That uh, handprint up there, it's my daughter's right hand. One day I just returned from fishing and she got stuck in and uh, got her hands dirty and then decided to make a handprint up on the wall with the fish blood. It sort of reminds me of a happy time. Arthur split from his wife when his daughter was just two and a half. He's lived on his own for more than 20 years. Friends and family aren't all that keen on visiting me. I've been disappointed. It was my 70th birthday not long ago, and I was hoping that some of them might arrive. I mean, I live alone. My daughter's grown up and unmarried. Over the years, Arthur's hoard grew. But when his father passed away, things spiralled out of control. I have been reported, as it were, to the local authority some years ago. But I haven't heard from them for a while, so I'm hoping I have persuaded them that there's no actual danger. But for Arthur's neighbours, the hoard is an eyesore. Arthur has got a little bit of a reputation around the street. I think it's just a general thing that people aren't happy, so a, a lot of people do judge and they do say that it does need clearing out. Local girl Helen has known Arthur all her life. Oh, hello. Hello, Arthur. <laughs> How are you, my darling? I'm um, not too bad. All right. I thought yeah, I'd yeah. pop round for a cup of tea and catch well, up. come in. Thank you. I know you've not seen the place for a few years, so be careful. That's okay. all I'm saying. But okay. th there's nothing to worry about. It's simply a bit of stuff on the floor. Uh, do come through. Helen used to play with Arthur's daughter when they were children. This is right. most concerning but hasn't been inside the flat for over 15 years. How can you get to your toilet? Why is there a wet newspaper on the floor? Don't like this? Nope. Nope, not standing in there. I would very much value your opinion. This is some rhubarb that I grew in the garden and cooked this morning to make rhubarb jam. So I wondered whether Maybe on a piece I'm not, of... I'm not going to eat it out there, No, you don't have though. to eat it. I'm going to eat it anyway, because I think it's absolutely yummy. Mm. Oh, I imagine it tastes nice, Arthur, but yeah, it needs... And, um, well... Mm. Arthur has been collecting things all his life. I don't understand why you got all the paper on the floor. No, no, it's a good point, that. Yeah. That's... La laziness, I think, probably is the most explanation. I was a collector as a child. I find things contain memories. I just find I'm a collector, instinctively. There's the nowhere to sit. There is one chair. This is a fine rocking chair. And all I have to do is take the stuff off it, sit down. When I look around at my den and hoard, it does represent me in so many ways. You know, I can pick up an essay that I wrote at school and read it again and reflect. You know, it's all by history. I don't want my history being sort of dumped at the local dump. And it has been suggested that I have a mental illness, this hoarding. I mean, that's rubbish. But if you think of the number of people who hoard in their garages, in their attics, in their kitchen drawers, they're hoarding, all of them. So well, how do you even get oh, yes. into your bed? It's quite simple. When I want to go to bed, I just take what's on the bed, off the bed, and make a little space so that I can put out my sleeping bag and crawl in it and have a sleep. And you're quite happy sleeping like that? Yeah, it's lovely, cosy, a bit like a dormouse, really. But if Arthur wants to avoid further run-ins with the neighbours, he's got some thinking to do. It is horrendous compared to what it used to be, and I think it really is time that he made a change. To a hoarder, their belongings are priceless treasures.
but some hoards really are more valuable than others. Inside this four-bedroom house in Leafy Richmond, there are 3,000 vintage dresses, 500 handbags, and even more shoes. With every room crammed full, this hoard could be worth thousands. When you walk in through the front door, first thing that you'll see is obviously a complete mountain of bags, gloves, scarves, hats, wigs. We've got some wigs there. Then we've got kind of another pile of vintage. It got to the stage that I couldn't, I, I didn't feel comfortable about inviting people around that I didn't know. A few bits, hang on. Because I know that first impressions are going to be, oh my goodness me. When you start to realise that you've got more than the normal, whatever normal is, it's like a wake-up call to say, this shouldn't be in your house, this is almost your house is being used as a storage unit. It really is hard to admit that it's gone from being a collection to a hoard. When you actually finally say, yeah, OK, I am a hoarder, I've got too much stuff and I can't live the lifestyle I want to while I still have all of this clothing around me. After years of being walled up, Mandy wants to make a change. I decided that with all of my hoard, there's no way I'm just going to be able to get rid of it. So I want to start selling it. Sell some of my handbags, some of my jewellery, some of the shoes. Her dream is to create an online business selling vintage clothes. This is a real turning point for me. I see a vision of where I want to be. Um, I don't want to live how I'm living now. But will the hoard actually be worth anything to anyone other than Mandy? Coming up, Arthur, here's a few home truths. With all seriousness, Arthur, you're living in a death trap. And is Mandy sitting on a gold mine? 60s disc dress, we're probably looking at 80 to 120. Hoarders prize their belongings even when they have no obvious cash value. Any attempt to throw things away can cause anxiety and upset. And today, Arthur is going to have his patience well and truly tested. He's getting a visit from extreme cleaners Kaz and T. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> You're the um, cleaners yeah. coming out of the rain, for goodness sake. Well, I'm sorry, it's a bit of a mess, but you know, I expect you're used to that. Okay. This is the main living room. Right, okay. But as you can see, living in it isn't that easy. You've got a daughter. You don't see her at all. Hardly ever. Always encourage her to come and stay. But for some reason, she doesn't. What do you think the reason is? It could be the mess, I suppose. Right. Let us help you out. The kitchen. Now, this is a challenge. You might want to take a deep breath. OK. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. So, okay. um... Like yes. <laughs> I've got a few concerns. I bet you have, yes. <laughs> so what are they? Well, I'm looking everywhere and the whole flat is full of newspaper or clothes. Oh, yes, there's a lot of newspapers, yes, yes. But you're a smoker. How yeah. have you not caught the place the light? I'm sorry to be... Oh, I see, yeah, yeah, good, good point. Well, I, I'm a very careful smoker. <laughs> I've been smoking for years. Yeah. With all seriousness, Arthur, you're living in a death trap. But this isn't the only cause for concern. Are you prepared to see the bathroom? Yes, I'm ready to this see the bathroom. This is a chamber of horrors. This this is. Is, I'm ready. Okay. It's fine. Now then, you see that string? Yeah. You've got to, first of all, hold the light bulb, which is on the ceiling, and then pull the string. There we go, we got oh, light. Jesus. Oh my God. If I let go of the light bulb, the light will go off. 
Arthur, yes. you can't switch your light on like that. I, 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 did, I did sound chastised. Did you not hear the spark when you touched the light bulb? Spark and paper. Spark I know what you're saying. and paper. Ex ex yes, exactly. I can't believe that. <laughs> I can't believe it. I thought it might go a bit overpowering. Oh, Sit down Arthur, for a moment. no. Have a cup of tea. No, Hi, um. no, no, no. It's clear something needs to be done urgently. But can a lifelong hoarder change his ways and let Cousin T get on with what needs to be done? So the question is, Arthur... Yes, Mum? What are you willing to let go of? Ah, to make good question. Space? Well, the point is, I'm a hoarder. So willing to let go of things is the crux of the problem. You're all right for the newspapers to go, aren't you? That's a leading question. Because I'm going to pick them up regardless. Be I quite. just want to know how you're feeling about that. Well, I can tell you how I'm feeling about that, you see. Nervous. Right, OK. If he thinks that, you know, this is OK and acceptable, it's not. That's his life. He could die. Fall asleep and drop a cigarette, knock something over. That's it. His flat's gone up. <laughs> He's quite a charming guy. He's a very charming guy. We can have a laugh and that joke and that thing, but to be honest, he's not even bloody funny. I, I don't intend to make any sacrifices, but I, I, I do agree that we're going to have to sort things into what stays and what goes. You know, my prayers are being answered at long last. Over 1.2 million people are thought to be hoarders across the UK. On the southernmost edge of London is the busy commuter town of Croydon. One of its three bedroom townhouses is home to Kim Sim, who has lived with her secret stash for over 10 years. Hoarding is an addiction, similar to like being an alcoholic. Oh, when I look at it, I do get a headache. It all started when she split from her ex-husband. It was a difficult breakup and a difficult journey for me. And during that time, yeah, I was buying about maybe a hundred pounds worth of things a week. You know, to escape from the reality of life by having possessions around you. I've got boxes and boxes and boxes and luggage, more luggage, gradually hoarding grows and grow and uh, I couldn't stop and as the boxes grow higher and higher I, I, I was I was trapped. Kim Sim tried to escape with a little help from professional cleaners. I was afraid I cried it was very difficult I literally was shivering and I was looking at my box of things that I need to declutter and uh, I was feeling lost, knowing that I'm not going to have them anymore. But now Kim Sim has found a reason to stop her hoarding ways. Jim, what was it like the first time when you saw my cord? Whoa. I think that's the only word I can describe that. After a whirlwind romance, Kim Sim's marrying new fella Jim. Jim and I met online and not long after that, two months later, he proposed to me. For us, it's important that when we get married, we have to set up our marital bedroom. It's just a matter of getting, getting the bed in. But most important is all my clothes. I think I have to get rid of. With the wedding booked in a few days' time, they've got their work cut out for them. Meanwhile, over in Plymouth... My head looks like a cone, by the way. <laughs> extreme cleaners Kaz and T are hard at work on Arthur's board. It's been two minutes, and this is going to be clear. I wonder what they're up to. But Arthur wants to inspect every sheet of paper before it's thrown away. Oi, oi, oi. It doesn't go on to inspection. You can see that's just newspaper. Oh, uh, it's newspaper, right? But right. Newspaper. Is it? These are not 
items you're going to sit down and no, no, reread. No, no. At a casual glance, you're right. Look I mean, at that. You I see am, how that's I embedded in the floor? All right. No, look, OK, that's what's going in the bin. Could I just explain what's my the... position on this? I you mean, can A. Explain, but I'm going to get it off the floor. Well, I'd rather you just listen for a moment. It won't take long. You, you know about <laughs> archaeological digging. And that's done very carefully with a paintbrush and a right. trowel. Right. Now, imagine yourself doing that here. That's because what we, that's what we're doing. Paintbrush and trowel, that's not a ballet great shovel. That is what we are doing, Arthur. I respect that. I'm These agreeing. are your things. But well, right yes. now, it's an old this newspaper. is not any use to you. Of this range, I quite agree. I think you can chuck that. Thank you. Can, right. we, can we... Can we... But the next handful, I need to have a look at. It's true, that one have been lost forever. Arthur, listen to me. Yes. Even if it was the paper you wanted to keep, yes. it can't be that important because oh, no. I've just dug it up from behind the door. That's where the important ones are. You'll be surprised. All right, I'm going then to strangle him. Did you do that? In Richmond, Vintage clothing and house clearance specialists, Lorraine and Paul, have arrived at Mandy's to try and put a cash value on her hoard. Our project started off as a house clearance company, which has now blossomed into a vintage warehouse. Today we're going to go into Mandy's house, we're going to have a look at a collection and hopefully help her out with a valuation. She wants to know what it's worth, so she can turn her hoard into money. Hello, come in. Come in. Sorry, you have to be careful there. It's all a bit squeezy. No worries. There's lots and lots of interesting stuff. Okay. But just too much of it. I'm a very good hoarder. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just like to follow me up here. Just be a bit careful on the stairs. That's all. There's so much stuff. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> How long has this been going on for? How long I have you been buying? I would say 30, 35 years. Okay. Easily. Okay. Easily. So that's why it's so hard to rip things out of my hands. For a, a, an actual hoarder to want to actually sort of get rid of her collection is, is a bit of a rarity. OK, let's get moving. Let's get going. Be prepared. <laughs> wow. So, love that. I know, it's gorgeous, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's amazing. Mm. Oh. So shall I leave you to it for a bit? Yeah, yeah. Right, go for it. I think hoarding has been a stage in my life when it's been quite difficult. It's easy to say, oh, well, you know, there's not really anyone that needs me, um, but my stuff is always here. I think the good thing about her is she knows her labels. It's a complete mix, really, isn't it? Paul, could you just grab this chain dress down for me? 60s disc dress, something like that, you're probably looking at 80 to 120. Yeah. That's a really nice piece. 60, 70 pounds for that, That's I'd say. See, so that probably retail about 40 pounds. I would suspect that she would find the more valuable stuff, the harder stuff mm -hmm. to let go. Brilliant. Gorgeous. She's got some really nice bits it's and pieces in here. It's just got a very quirky really style. Nice. Yeah, it makes you want to look more for bag. It feels a little bit strange, but I know that they know their stuff and I know that they're respecting the items that they're looking at. You've got a Bieber there. 60, 70 pounds for that, I'd say. I haven't really thought how much it would be the whole collection. Everything's like, wow, 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 wow. It's like yeah. a bit of an Aladdin's cave, really. Like it's a good hold. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very good hold. But how much do the professionals think it's worth? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> nice smiley faces. I'm taking that. That's a good thing. Yeah. We've enjoyed ourselves. I was just going to say. OK, so basically, how we're going to break it down, the downstairs section is very good. You yeah. could sort of say in five thousand pound possibly mm. down there the top floor we're going to say is worth probably fifteen thousand pound and yeah. that's where the, the better the bits and pieces yeah. were as far as the value goes for the for the collection we're going to say a conservative estimate would be 25 to thirty thousand. it could go higher that is really yeah. really well lovely done. well done you <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Absolutely amazing to hear the sort of value of my um, collection. You know, I'm fired up now. It's time to do it. Keep with the wires in here for now. Making room for the bride and groom is a priority for Kim Sim. And today, she's meeting with Joe. A declutter consultant. Hello. Hello, Kim Sim. Hi. Nice to meet you. Joe nice helps people tackle Thank both you. the hoard and its causes. Here it is. Okay. My hoard. All right. A lot of people walk into a space like this and it's too overwhelming. They think, where am I going to start? And they do what I call flitting. They'll go, right, they'll pick up something over here look at it and then they'll get distracted and then they'll go over to the other mm -hmm. side and you just end up moving stuff around as, right. as you know. So yeah. just pick up one thing at a mm -hmm. time, very quickly say, do I want this, do I love this? And think, mm, if I'm not sure, it goes. Well, this is the most important room that I need to declutter. Okay. Are you very attached to your clothes? Is that one of the items or things that you find difficult to let go of? Correct. My yeah. clothes are very attached to me maybe pick out three or four of the very favourite things and then say, I'll cut my losses with the rest. I'm quite serious now about, about um, getting rid of things. I think it really started my hoarding um, was during the separation of my ex. Emotionally, I was, it was a turmoil all over me, so the only way to help me during that time was to go out and buy things. My possessions became me, really me. Even getting rid of the little things, I found it so difficult. A lot of triggers for hoarding, like your marriage broke down, or you know, if somebody gets ill or there's a bereavement. But unfortunately, with everything, you know, in order to heal, as I'm sure you're aware, you have to acknowledge the pain. You have to go through that. You can't divert around it. I'm still going through this journey. But now that I have love and Jim is in my life, I think I can conquer anything else that comes my way. <laughs> this is a new chapter in your life, isn't That's it? Right. So right. out with the clothes, in with a new husband. That's right. <laughs> yes, correct, correct. I have a few reservations, obviously. She's at a good stage in her life. You know, everything's very exciting. She's about to get married, so things are good. But she still has to be careful and watch that it doesn't creep up on her again. The big plan now is to declutter this room so that Jim can put together the new bed that I just ordered. Whoa. Jim? Yup. Empty box is not looking to go in the trash later. Just stick them outside for a little bit. Coming up. The quickest way to get rid of cobweb. Deep cleaning tips from Kaz and T. Don't wet it. Does it just make it worse? There it go, Jip. And will Kim Sim's wedding night go with a bang? Oh, oh, oh. oh that's not good. <laughs> Seventy-year-old Arthur lives with a jumbled hoard of shredded newspaper and knickknacks that he's refused to get rid of, even when it's meant that family and friends won't visit. Do we need the front cover of Hello, do we? No. I rather like Megan. Bloody hell, Jerry Halliwell, it's raining men. I need that. Arthur, That's Arthur, a television stop, error. Stop, 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 stop. But I need you to work with us here. Okay. Because fun and joke aside, this is going to take weeks Arthur. and weeks. Ah! Arthur. I nearly went to the garage. I find with hoardism, people cocoon themselves with, with, with their hoard, and it's a comfort. And we're ripping that comfort away from that person. Really and truly, it's something we would throw away, but we can't do that to him because he's not ready. He's not ready. I had a little rummage, you know me. And I, I found this. This is audio tape. Which is no use to anyone. It is to me, you see. For Arthur, his hoard represents precious memories 
that he doesn't want to lose. But I need that sort of thing kept. Okay, so you're going to keep it and do Anything that looks like an audio tape. What are you right, going to okay. do? Even a pulled and tatty audio tape. You want it right. kept. You it's supposed to be kept. I appreciate it may seem difficult to them. Uh, they, they have been, some of them, partly damaged. And any further shoveling with a shovel will completely wreck them. And these tapes, uh, irreplaceable voice letters, my parents' voices. You rip through the papers and you tear up the past. It's a tape. It it's is. It's a broken tape. It may be look broke, it's, but it's still got the messages. No, hold on. Losing my mother at the time I did, I was about 25, I think. We had a phone call from Dad. Come home, Mum's not well. And she wasn't and was dead within about a fortnight. It had cancer. Living in an unhygienic mess is not my style. But the passing of my parents were probably stages on the way, if you see, to the present condition. I know you want to get the job done, and he's, he's like, oh, I'm going to kind of slow things down. But having said that, he's quite amicable to a certain extent. So I'm going to work with that, if that makes sense. You know, it's a, a good cop, bad cop situation. I know, I know. Yeah? And I'm always the bad cop, I know, I? I know. As we're here now... Oh, well, I guess. Kaz decides right. to take right. a different approach and work with right, Arthur very, on the kitchen. It's a bloody good I'll tell you what, can I start with this? Yes. Yeah? Now, see, there are far too many plastic bags down there. Oh, oh my gloves, look at those. Oh, Shakespeare, I wonder where he was. Oh, look at that. I found my house keys at last. <laughs> Having finally gained Arthur's trust, they begin to make progress. A little bit of carpet down there, I say. I haven't seen that in the carpet for, for ages. I'm doing a grand job here. Yeah. I could almost burst into song. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Letting anybody into your hoard is a risky business. And there were a few matters I had to discuss. And I, I think they paid attention. And consequently, all sorts of things I might have lost have fortunately been saved. And other things that I should have lost a long time ago have, in fact, now been consigned to the tip, as it were. It's clear this is too big a job for one day. Hopefully, Arthur can hang on to his newfound enthusiasm overnight. We'll be back tomorrow. Right, Mum. And we've left you a little bit of washing up today. Thanks. You're more than welcome. Bye, Arthur. Sure. Tomorrow. I'm just hoping we come back tomorrow and the house is still <laughs> looking decent. It will in the kitchen. I don't think it will be. Yeah. Hello. Now Mandy knows Thanks that there's a potential £30,000 piled up in her home. She's decided it really is time to sort through her clothes. Start with this room. Her friend Mel has agreed to help, but it's not going to be easy. You know, I can remember when we bought that. Yeah. It's quite hard, but. Yeah. 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 yeah no, that's going to go. <laughs> By their very nature, hoarders don't find it easy to part with possessions. Oh, that is on to keep the kimono jacket. Yes? Yeah. I really? Do want to keep, yeah, I do want to keep that. You know how I love pink suede. I'm not going to be able to get rid of that. Are you sure? Yes. How many bags have you got? I'm not going to be able to get rid of the pink suede. Mandy is serious about turning it into a business, but I think maybe is underestimating the work that would take us. I can't just get that pile, Mel, and just mm. pick it up and put it in. I know people would say, just lift it up and stick it straight into a bag and just get rid of it. It's like ripping off a bandage. There's going to be some pain involved in moving on. I'm thinking of, like, time-wise. I know. We've got, you know, just that small pile in, in the kind of ocean of, of everything. I think it's, it's like a crisis point for me. Once the Pandora's box is open, you can't really go back and you've got to do what you'll say that you're going to do. That one I'm going to keep. Uh, 
let go, Jip. You okay? In Croydon, Kim Sim is racing to get the clutter out of her home before husband to be, Jim, moves in. It is going to be a one big job. No, no, darling, can you just hold that for me? Okay. Hold it, don't drop it. Okay. It. Ah! The main task to is to clear yeah. the bedroom. Yeah, right. So these are for tops, trousers, shirts. I need a system because without the system, I'll get all messed up again. I'm getting too old for this. Come on. As a holder, you definitely need support. You need support from friends, children, people around you. You just need to have honest people to tell you. That's going back, Sergeant Peppers. It's my favourite. No way will that go. Why? Right, run around to me. Okay. Oh, this is wonderful. We can watch TV. Yeah. I'll clear that bit, and then we put our TV up there. Good. Yeah. Very successful. Yeah. Indeed, darling. Very successful. Happy. Yes, I'm so happy. Oh, 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 oh careful. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I don't like that. After leaving Arthur alone in his flat overnight, cleaners Kaz and T are returning to finish the job. Hold on. The handprint on the wall? Yeah. There's a heart around it I now. Know. That wasn't no. there yesterday? No. Because he wants it protected. What's that about? That's, that's his daughter's handprint. We'll wash around that. Society seems to think that I have a problem and that they want to change me. Right. I don't want to be changed, helped possibly, but not changed. Careful. Ooh, I see, I see a peppermint. Oh, excuse me. Don't I like those. Think about eating that peppermint. Oh, put it in. Oh. No. no. Right With one final push needed to finish the cleanup, Arthur! Neighbour Helen offers to help. Arthur! <laughs> I can see your floor. Oh, yeah. Arthur, can you hear me? Ah, yes, I can hear you now. <laughs> right, the clothes have come out of the bathroom. I'm going to put straight in a bin bag. Okay? This is a bin bag for the tip. Yes. Together, they're going to tackle the bedroom. And Helen is taking no prisoners. Here we go, in the bin. Thank you. Oh, this is to get the fleas out of my dog. Bin. <laughs> Bin it. Oh, my in the bin. Oh, Come on. Thank you. Helen needs to join the extreme team. We'd welcome Helen. She's ruthless. She's, She's on point. Like the colour? Nice colour, yes. Mandy has managed to make some space in her spare bedroom. The nicest thing is, I have a little bit of room here. Not a lot but certainly room that I didn't have yesterday, which is feeling really positive. But she Hello. now faces a much bigger challenge. Hello. She's chosen some clothes to sell online, but is she ready to take the plunge? I've got some bags already ready. Is that okay? Sounds like a plan. Great. <laughs> Her friend Abby has offered support. Should I put that down as 25? First up, they have to decide how much to charge. That's pretty, isn't it? I'll probably put that up at 15. If she can sell at these prices, then this rail alone could fetch up to 200 pounds. And then I think I've got pounds. this one. Plain one, so I'll just put a five on that one. But Mandy's one. desire to hang on to her treasure trove and then I think I've got is this as strong one, as ever. Nice. I'm quite nervous. I've never done it before. That'll look quite nice against the... It's definitely work in yes, progress at the moment. Good. It's almost like the snowball is rolling and, you know, there is no stop. And that's, that's um, a little bit scary. I might have to just put that to one side. One item. One item is not too bad, is it? I don't want to set myself up to fail. You know, so you have to start with little steps and it will get easier. Um, so I'm going to put these two back. I'm not sure I wanted to part with those. 
um, straight away. Back in a minute. All right, won't be long. Coming up, is it finally time for tea and cake at Arthur's? Have a slice if you want. Oh, and can Mandy face her demons and put her first dress up for sale yeah. online? Okay, next. Next. Yeah, sure. After two days of sorting, bagging and storing, Arthur's flat is finally ready for its deep clean. Where do you expect my spiders to live now? You're not complaining about us getting rid of the no. cobwebs? No, of course not. No, he is not, are you, Arthur? Of course not. Never cross my mind. Full of grease like this. Don't wet it. It'll just make it worse. Just take off the grease. Well, this will be handy. You never guess what this is. The professionals wear these. It's called a... Apron. Although he's a hoarder, Arthur has professional experience of cleaning. I found myself out of work and had to get a job. And this happened to be a cleaning job with London Transport. Cleaning the London Underground. Is that you? That's me, yes. You'd go in at about 11pm, a messy railway station like the bank or wherever, and by 7 a.m., it had to be spotless. But God knows when that was taken. How about the tie? Have you Has noticed? Look, that's Arthur. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dishy, was I? I don't know. You dishy. Oh, right, yeah. Pity we didn't meet then. The next time I come here, I want to see you in that, doing a bit of cleaning, <laughs> keeping on top of what's been happening. I can't wait to be here later and see what the whole place is going to look like. And I think he's going to be overwhelmed. Even Dad's smiling. I might sit down and have a cup of tea with him. So we'll see which um, kettle he decides to boil it in. <laughs> That's a good one to start with. And then if Mandy I, is I determined a, to try and turn her hoard so. into cash by selling some of her vintage outfits. What's it look like against that? Does it look OK? First photograph. That's the start of it all. Isn't it? That's great. Yeah. It's a good feeling. It feels good. Aww. With Aww. Abby's help, she's doing yeah. a trial run and posting her it first is. dress feels good. online. The first one will be epic. I'm very excited. Oh, maybe I should just keep it? No. <laughs> you knew what I was going to say. Maybe. No, no, no. You're right. I've been feeling nervous and anxious, but I feel really positive about the future now. Shall I um, put my first post up onto Instagram? So I've got the photograph there. Yeah, let's click next. Next. And so the, yeah, yeah, share it. Share. And there it is. Oh, oh my goodness. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's quite emotional. I like <laughs> It's a modest start to the £30,000 potential piled up in Mandy's hoard. I'm moving forward and things are starting to become organised in my life. I'm feeling very brave. Just a bit nervous now, so I've done it once, so I've got to be able to do it again. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Many times more. Many times more. There's a lot of dresses to go. Look at the change. Kim Sim is also beginning a new chapter in her life. Today, she's marrying Jim. I worked till nearly four o'clock in the morning because I was very determined to get this place. Looks better. I do not want to live like that again. Do you, James, freely enter into the union of marriage with Kim's son? I do. I'm excited about getting married to this wonderful man to spend my life with him. Happy to announce that you are now husband and wife. Today is the first day of a new life for both of us. I have come a long way in terms of my holding, but uh, now I'd like to move on, on. to a better 
less cluttered life. <laughs> Go! Yes, let's go! <laughs> For almost 20 years, Arthur's home has been buried in newspaper and jumble. When I came, I couldn't walk into his front room. I hope we've done enough to show him that people don't leave, like, how we found this place. I used to feel embarrassed, I suppose, but then I got over that. Now I almost feel proud. Where once the oven was caked in grime, now there's almost shine. The bed that was buried alive is somewhere for Arthur to sleep again. And the lounge that was a fire hazard is safe to live in once more. And a newly decluttered Arthur has planned a surprise. I know you keep asking me how I feel. I'm not very good at that sort of thing. So I thought I'd show you how I feel. Thank you for all your work. Let's have a look. Have a slice if you want. Thank you for it should all be all right. your hard work. I didn't make it, you see. I don't oh, have to tell you. Oh, awesome. <laughs> that was totally unexpected, his reaction, because you can see that he's a joker. <laughs> So for him to become emotional, that's really touched me. That you're crying. I know. <laughs> I'm a sentimental old fool. <laughs> there we go. We're definitely going to come back in six months' time, see how he's getting on. I have a feeling in my water that the future's looking bright. <laughs> <laughs>